Hey guys, Daniel here. Welcome back for another video. Before we get started, I just wanted to thank both both of the uh, patrons that decided to take time out of their day and donate to me. Uh, one of them is my awesome mom. Thank you, mom, for, for donating. And another one is my Aunt Rosa. Thank you, Aunt Rosa, for, for donating also. That means so much to me, guys. Thank you so much. Um, now let's get into the parts that were not included in the first unboxing. If you didn't see that, I'll leave a link down in, this, in the uh, description so that you can go and check out the first, uh, first set of parts that came in. Um, but first, let's get started with the CPU. Instead of any of the two parts that I picked before, or that I said I was probably gonna pick, uh, I went ahead and got the Ryzen 5 3600X. Um, I don't think I'm going to be doing anything that's gonna require eight core 16 threads, at least not on this computer. I think uh, just for sim racing, uh, mainly sim racing in VR, I think this is gonna be more than enough paired up with the 2070 Super. I think I'm gonna be more than happy with just this guy and, uh, and the 2070 Super. Next, we have the uh, one terabyte solid state drive. This is the Samsung 860 QVO. Um, I'm not sure if I already said it's one terabyte, but it is. Um, this should give me extremely fast load up times and, um, and just give me plenty of space for all the, uh, all the games. There aren't that many sim racing titles out there, so uh, we should be just fine with this. And I can always add more. Last but not least, we have the uh, power supply. This is the uh, Thermaltake Tough Power, yeah, Thermaltake Tough Power Grand RGB. It's 750 watts, 80 plus gold certified. Um, this should be, again, more than enough. I always like to buy more than enough for parts just so that gives me room to grow and then also gives me, you know, the 80 plus gold certified. It's going to have a very good power efficiency rating. Um, couple couple other parts I decided to go with are, uh, these are just some um, cheap power supply extension cables off of Amazon. These were, I think the cheapest ones available, they were $29.99 on Amazon, uh, that's US dollars. Um, these are just some red and black uh, cables, they came with cable combs as well. Um, these should help, you know, kind of make the inside of the case pop a little bit, instead of just having all black, uh, just some rubber uh, PSU cables. Um, another couple of parts I went with, this is a uh, deep cool. 10 port fan hub. This should keep, you know, try and keep some cable management clean, kind of bringing all the fans to just one um, single point behind the uh, motherboard tray, I think is what it's called. And then um, kind of just keep one connector come into the motherboard for, uh, for the fans in the case. And then we have the Arctic uh, 120 millimeter fans. These are the P12 PWM fans. Uh, these are just all black. I don't really like RGB. Um, I may even take the, uh, the two RGB fans that came included in the case, I may even take those out and just uh, have them for, for another build or something. But I think that covers the parts that, um, that we didn't get in the first video. So let's go ahead and get started with, uh, with building. So first we have to pull the motherboard out of the box. And you also want to pull out any necessary hardware that you're going to be needing. Um, so the I.O. shield that'll go on the back of the case. This was obviously depending on the motherboard because some of them come with the I.O. shield integrated on the motherboard these days. Um, these are some SATA cables for your hard drives. Um, and I think there was one more thing. Oh, and um, if you're installing an M.2 um, solid state drive, you're gonna need this little screw. This is to mount it to the motherboard. A lot of you may not have seen it. Well obviously because I didn't pull it out of the bag or the box in the first video, but this is the MSI B450 Mortar Titanium. Uh, I love the look of this motherboard. It looks amazing in this uh, sort of um, kind of lighter than a gunmetal gray, uh, but I guess you can call it titanium on the, uh, on the overall finish of the board. Looks awesome. Let's get, uh, let's get started. So the main thing you want to do immediately after pulling the uh, motherboard out of the, out of the, uh, the box Obviously inspect it for any damage that might have uh, happened during shipping or um, any manufacturer defects. Um, it looks like we already have the M.2 standoffs in both of our locations. Um, let's actually check real quick before we move further, just in case we need to move them. I'm going to be going with this top one. Let's see if... Oh, um, so this is just an M.2 heatsink. Um, this is just going to keep the M.2 drive cool. It comes with three total thermal pads, but you're obviously only going to use two unless you mess one up and you can use the third one. Um, so it's got a thermal pad in between the red fins and the chip, 
and then another one underneath it to kind of sandwich it in between a couple of thermal pads and the M.2 heatsink. Um, this is also kind of going along with the red and black aesthetic that I'm trying to go for. I just want to make sure that uh, you kind of go in at an angle, make sure it clicks in, and perfect. We're, um, we don't need to move that, uh, that standoff at all. So let's get the, uh, the CPU installed before we move any further. Another thing with your CPU, since these are exposed pins, uh, kind of hold it up into the light and make sure you don't have any bent pins from the factory. That can happen, um, but this one looks perfect. Um, another thing you want to look for is this little yellow arrow. Make sure that that is pointing pretty much towards your, um, your input output, your IO in the back of the motherboard. So you want to pull up this lever here, make sure it's all the way to the back, and then just kind of, you don't want to put any pressure on this because it's obviously got exposed pins. You kind of just want to let it fall into place. It just did. And then once, kind of give it a slight little wiggle, make sure it doesn't, um, make sure it doesn't move around. And then just bring the arm down all the way till it clicks and boom, you're installed. Since I put the M.2 drive in there, let's go ahead and put a uh, screw in it so it doesn't fall out when I'm moving it around. Uh, okay, got it out. Let's get our screwdriver out of here. We can toss that to the side for now. Get my screwdriver out of my little tool kit. This isn't any fancy tool kit. It is just a um, an old cooler box that I had for an old Noctua low profile cooler. So you kind of don't want, or you can't even use a big screwdriver for this. So also another thing is to make sure that it's a magnetic uh, bit so that it holds the screw as you're kind of moving it around. You see them holding it upside down. It's not going anywhere until we uh, bring it down to the drive here and just screw it in. Make sure it is lined up properly and just screw it in until you are secure. Alrighty, and it's tight. All right, so next what we want to remove, I think I'm not gonna need the, um, the AMD factory cooler uh, brackets here, so I'm gonna remove those now. Oh, I'm gonna have to actually, there we go. Crack that one loose. Got that one. Okay, and last but not least. So I've taken off the factory cooler brackets that were just here. It's just two Phillips head screws. They actually took a little more torque than I was expecting. Um, so next we're going to install the RAM modules. Um, these are two eight gigabit, gigabyte, sorry, gigabyte sticks of DDR4 3600 megahertz speed at cast latency 16. Um, G skill rip jaws. I don't know if that's V or five, but uh, that's what they are. Um, and one thing to remember when you're installing two sticks of RAM on a motherboard with four slots is you're only going to be using the furthest most slot and then uh, you're going to skip one and go in one more and that's the the two slots that you're going to populate if you're only using two and on the motherboard it actually shows which two you're going to be populating here it says uh, dim a2 and dim b2 and it even has uh, a little bracket there that says first so that's really helpful. Uh, so you don't have to consult your manual to uh, just to install some RAM sticks. All right, let's get to that. Oh, my uh, <laughs> my backplate came off. Let's put that back on. That's one thing to remember is obviously if there's no screws holding in your backplate, it's going to just pop right off. All right, so to um, release these two, you just press down on either side just like that and then these have a little notch in them you want to take note of that and then line that up with the notch that's in the actual ram slot on the motherboard so it looks like i have just gone backwards let's flip it around and you want to apply even pressure on both sides so you can use your thumb and index finger like i'm doing here press 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 and you should hear a couple of clicks and that will let you know that you're installed so let's go for round two Press, 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 and you're in. That's a, that's 16 gigs of RAM installed. Another thing is you want to remove some of these uh, pieces of plastic. Throw that over there. I think that's the only one. Okay. Um, so next, uh, you can install the cooler now. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do that because uh, it is a liquid cooler. Um, it might make things a little bit of a pain to deal with. Uh, so let's actually get the motherboard in the case. Uh, I made a change in the plans here. 
I'm actually going to install the cooler before we go into the case. Um, so let's get with that because I kind of wanted to show this uh, in case anybody is going to get this cooler. Um, so it actually came with uh, two of these brackets, two of these little um, sort of weird shaped brackets here. Um, you're going to install a screw into these two holes onto the actual heat plate here, or the cold plate. Um, and those get uh, one of these longer screws here. Let's just go ahead and put it in there. Grab our screwdriver. Make sure it's nice and tight. Okay. Grab the other one. Okay. And where's my other screw? There it is. One good thing about this cooler is uh, it doesn't take up a USB 2.0 header on your motherboard. It just connects to one of the CPU fan connectors and that is it. And then you control all of the uh, speeds of everything from within the BIOS. So that's good that you're not gonna lose any USB 2.0 connections in case your, um, your case has any of those connectors. Mine does not, it only has two USB 3.0s. Um, but if you wanted to add RGB controllers or anything like that, um, this thing would not impose on your case and take any of the um, USB 2.0 headers by requiring the uh, one of the headers. Um, and it's also, you don't need any extra software to run it because it's all running within your BIOS. So let's bring the motherboard back here. Um, like I said, the back plate just popped off because there's no screw holding it. So let's lay it back down, get it lined up. Okay. And uh, you never want to forget your thermal paste. This is actually the same uh, thermal paste that I have in the tube, wherever it may be. Probably. Mm, yeah, ah, whatever. We'll just use this because it's the same kind that I have. Um, what I want, actually want to do is clean it first. I've got some 91% uh, isopropyl alcohol and a coffee filter. The reason <laughs> I'm using a coffee filter is because it doesn't leave behind any lint. So that's good. You're not going to wipe it and then come back to some uh, some lint on the on the motherboard or sorry on the CPU. Let's just give it a nice little wipe down. Okay, that should be good. Make sure it dries off of there. And then you've got a nice little piece of plastic here on your cooler or your uh, cold plate on the cooler. Uh, I don't think you need to clean this off, but I'll go ahead and do it anyway. Um, some coolers will have thermal, thermal paste pre-applied, so you won't need to clean it off unless you want to use any thermal paste of your own. Um, if you have a good brand like Arctic or, or um, something else and you want to use it, that's up to you, of course. Make sure that dries off of there. We should be good. Okay, let's give ourselves a good little, good little helping of some thermal paste. So sorry about that, guys. Um, I actually ended up installing these uh, these sort of uh, straight brackets. I installed them the wrong direction, so the cooler was not lining up properly. Went ahead and just cleaned off the thermal paste that was already on there. And um, let's, I've got uh, my Arctic MX4 here. Let's apply some more. <laughs> so that should be plenty right there. Get it to make a nice little ice cream cone there. Clean off the excess. And here's my lid. Okay, so now let's install this properly this time. So I'm going to actually stand up just so I make sure I'm lined up properly. And I'm going to just go straight down. And let's put one screw in. Make sure we get lined up. I think we're almost there. There it goes. Put another one in on the opposite corner. 
just like you're installing a car tire. Nope, missed it. Missed the hole, guys. All right, I think we're lined up. Let's get these two started. Okay, I think that's started. Let's go over to this corner. Okay, that's started. So we at least got one on each corner. Now let's put one more in the other corners. Okay, let's go through the tubes. All right, you never want to tighten one screw uh, all the way down. You kind of just want to go in a nice star pattern, making sure that you don't apply too much pressure on one corner before the others, so just take your time with this. You don't wanna rush through this. Definitely not trying to set any records here. All right guys, for my next trick, we're gonna install the power supply in the case. Uh, let's get it out of the box here. Here is our bag with all of our modular cables. Apparently the power supply doesn't want to be installed. Alright, love that new power supply smell. Let me get this guy out of the way. Okay. Now before you get it in the case, it's a good rule of thumb to install all the cables that you need. So this is definitely one you need. This is your um, 20 plus four pin um, motherboard connector or uh, power supply cable, sorry. Uh, we'll install this one now. And this is going to go in these two uh, connectors here. Let's get this out of the way real quick. Um, so this one looks like it's going to connect to the power supply. It doesn't say so, but uh, looking at this, I just know that the motherboard connector is just one block of, uh, of, of um, pins here. And then this one obviously looks like it's going to plug in one on the bottom. Here's a little click, that means it's in, and one on the top. And it says here, 24 pin ATX. Okay, plug it in until you hear the click, and we're good there. Okay, set this down. Oh, this is just the wall plug. Put that over there. And let's see here. This one looks like it is a, okay, so this is the motherboard. I'm sorry, the CPU power. Keep these, uh, these little bread bag tie looking things. These are good for cable management and they are uh, not permanent like uh, like zip ties are, so that's always good. All right, and um, this one, the connector that is actually split, that one goes to your motherboard. Uh, they don't, uh, the only downside I'm seeing about this one is um, usually these will say uh, MB uh, for motherboard on the uh, connectors to tell you which side, but um, consult the manual if you are ever not sure. So it looks like this one, um, on the power supply says four plus four CPU. The reason it says four plus four is because these are each four pin connectors and there's two of them. Four plus four equals eight. I didn't do well in math, but I, at least I know that. All right, and this one is one of our GPU connectors. I don't know how many we'll need, um, but it looks like this one comes with two of them. Uh, and we have a extension for this. Um, but I'm not exactly sure how many we'll need. So I will take the GPU out of the box real quick just, just to verify. So this, I didn't um, specify what model exactly it was. I, I did say 2070 Super, but they have different models with EVGA. This is the 2070 Super Black Gaming Edition. Uh, 
let's get some of this plastic off. We'll do some peel porn for all you peel porn fetish freaks. Alright, so we know um, that we will only be needing a uh, 8 plus 6 connector for that. Alright, so let's plug in this here. And the, I don't know if I said this, but anytime you see connectors that are uh, separated, those are usually going to go to the uh, motherboard side, with the exception of the 24 pin ATX uh, power plug there for the, for the motherboard. All right, so this is going to go in the other red plug here. And then the last thing we need is SATA power for our solid state drive, and that's this one right here. Kind of just got lucky with pulling that out. Okay. And these, these are cool because you can daisy chain up to three drives or um, anything that's SATA powered, you could daisy chain it off of this. This in. And let's put this in our, our motherboard. Or sorry, in our case. <laughs> Jesus. Alrighty. Let's get the case. So I went ahead and took both of the front and rear panels off already. Um, I actually want to remove this drive cage because I'm not going to be using it. I want maximum room for storing cables back here. Um, looking at it, it looks like it's just going to go in from the rear here. And uh, you want to make sure that you mount this with the fan facing down because there is no uh, ventilation holes up here. So let's just throw it on in there. Okay. We are in. Perfect. Let's uh, get this power supply installed. It's going to use the same screws that the motherboard will use to be secured. It's these little um, hex head, Phillips head screws. You could use a nut driver or you could use uh, the Phillips head. Uh, not many people will have a nut driver that's this size, so we'll just go ahead and use a Phillips head. Now let's turn this around a little bit so you guys can see. So you've got... Um, four screws. You got one up here. One down in the corner. One up here in the top right. And one more in the bottom right. Sorry, bottom left. Okay, now that that's in, we're going to now install the motherboard. So I'll get this set up and ready for that. All right, guys, so we're going to then install the motherboard inside the case. I went ahead and put the um, red and black cable extensions on already. Just that doesn't uh, need to be in the video because uh, not everybody will be using them. Um, but we're going to install first the IO shield. And I have a little hair stuck under here. I'm trying to get that out. All right, perfect. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to make sure that the little circles and the SPDIF are on the bottom or towards the bottom of the case. So make sure that these circles are on the bottom. And then let's install it in here. Make sure you hear a good click all around. Give it a nice push all around it. And I think we are in. All right, so now we're going to get the motherboard installed. So let's grab it and we're going to make sure that we Come in at a sort of an angle here. And 
looks like we're lined up, so let's try and get our cooler to rest out here for now. We don't want to install it just yet because it may make it hard to uh, to get the um, the CPU power connector on. There we go, I think we're lined up now. All right, so let's grab our screwdriver. Take the motherboard box out of here. Here is where a uh, magnetic tip Phillips head will come in handy, because I'm going fully. You're going down. Going down in the DMs. Okay, and these you do not want to over tighten by any means. Just kind of get it snug and it is just fine. All right, guys, so um, looks like I made a bit of a mistake. I actually needed to uh, remove the motherboard out of the case in order to break these PCIe covers off. They're not um, removable. You do have to break them off. So I will just stick a Phillips head screwdriver into the hole here to assist with pushing in, and then you just bend it back and forth. That's one, and since our uh, graphics card is a dual slot, there, let's try and just use our fingers. Uh, apparently I am weak. <laughs> there we go, okay, so that was actually still stuck on the top one. Bend it back and forth, and it is gone. So let's get the motherboard installed again. Okay. Wow. <laughs> All right, so we'll just leave that resting out there. One thing I didn't point out earlier was plugging in the CPU uh, fan or the um, the pump and fan connector for the uh, the fans in the in the uh, AIO pump. So I will do that now. I'll at least plug it in. I can worry about cable management later. And let's get these screws back in the motherboard. All right, guys. So um, I actually moved the uh, RGB fans that were on the front. I moved those up top so that we could have matching Arctic fans on the front and on the rear of the radiator. Um, so let's go ahead and get the radiator completely mounted in there. Uh, let's get a screw and a washer. And let's get the radiator secured. That's one. And unfortunately, given how I want to have this mounted, I will only be able to install two screws into the radiator, but that shouldn't be a problem whatsoever. We got the cooler, or sorry, the radiator installed. Um, only two screws up top. Uh, it's really not going to be, you know, getting jumbled around, so we should be fine there. I think we are ready to begin wiring everything up. We got our two RGB fans up top. We got our rear exhaust fan here, and we have our push-pull radiator up at the front. Um, let's go ahead and spin it around, and let's get wiring. We'll go ahead and just push the 24-pin uh, connector in. Uh, Cable management is going to be interesting in this case, to say the least. Just push all this in there and get it as far back as possible without repeating anything else. Okay, uh, let's get our front panel as well around here. So we have our kind of already pushed it through, but this is our USB 3.0, the really fat connector. 
our HD audio. I really wish they would actually make all these black or put a piece of uh, shrink tubing. I guess the customer could do that too, but it gets a little annoying, I guess. Um, these are your, our, our front panel connectors. We have our power switch, our reset switch, our hard disk drive LED, and our power LEDs as well. Um, so let's route these up through here. Put those, just let them rest up there. Same with the, actually the HD audio might be a little bit of a pain. Actually, nope, we'll go right over the power supply. We'll just leave that dangling up there. USB 3.0, we'll push that through as well. There we go. And then we'll put our graphics card cables. We'll push these in as well. for now and then we'll push whatever we don't need back. Worry about cable management later. And then a SATA plug needs to go up. We'll do the last one. It needs to go up through here for our SSD. And uh, one thing I wanted to point out is the SSD, um, the case actually, came with these little, pretty cool little thumb screws uh, that just pop into these little rubber booties on the case. So we'll screw this one back in. And I think I put all of them away, but I have four already mounted in the case. Uh, so let's push this through for now. Let's put our 24 pin up through here. And our eight pin power, yep. Back under all of this and up through here. Oh, I didn't actually put any trainers on that. I'll do that now. So these are our little cable combs. These clip into the uh, into the cables, or the cables clip into it rather. We'll go ahead and do that now. Slide those in together. Make sure they stay put. And let me actually let's spin the case around and see how the tab is. Okay, so the tab is actually on top. Let's see if we can actually point it towards the light here. So we have a little notch up top, and that's where these little uh, these little teeth bite onto. So that means the cable is going to have to pretty much um, flip around and do one of these, pretty much a U-turn. So let's figure out. So that means the comb will have to go on this side. Okay. All right, let's get this through. Flip it around, and plugged in. Okay, we're in. Make it look nice and tidy. So that is the CPU power plug. Now let's go for the motherboard power, the 24 pin connector. So just get it to do the same thing, make it do a U-turn, and get it plugged in. Alright, so like I was saying about the SSD, um, we are going to just pretty much just press it in into these little four uh, rubber stoppers. Um, make sure your connectors are facing back so that you can keep them hidden. Just line up all the little feet, and if I can find the holes, there we go. Just press it in and it's in. It's not going anywhere. So that's a really cool uh, mounting design. I've never seen something like that in a case. 
Uh, we'll wait to wire that uh, here in a little bit. Um, so let's do our front panel connectors because those look like they'll be a little more of a pain right now. Um, luckily, I've already read the uh, owner's manual for this motherboard, or at least just to know where the um, motherboard plugs need to go, or sorry, the front panel plugs need to go. Um, so let's try and hold these out of the way. Let's do the reset switch and the hard disk, or the sorry, the drive activity um, connector. So we'll get that one in. And then, which one's this one? Oh, what the? Okay, there we go. Okay, so hard disk uh, LED goes on the left, reset switch goes on the right on the bottom portion of the pins. All right, those are in. And then the power switch goes right over the reset switch. There we go. And then finally the LEDs. And like I said, make sure negative goes on the left. All right, so with the USB 3.0 plug, um, it's got a little notch here and that's gonna line up with a notch on the uh, 3.0 header on the motherboard. And we are plugged in. All right, so we can probably still mount our SSD here. We certainly can, perfect. And that doesn't look too bad. Okay, so let's wire up the SSD now. So let's see if I can remember okay actually let's plug it in and then we will set it back down in there yeah that's correct oh one thing uh, the SSD has uh, sort of an L-shaped um, male connector on it and then the SATA um, plugs from the PSU have the same sort of female end on it so Let's make sure you line those up properly and be careful with the connectors because the SATA, um, or sorry, the SSD and hard disk, if you're using a spinning disk, they're sensitive. They can break very easily. So just be careful, don't, don't manhandle it. Uh, let's get our, our SATA data transfer. So this is, the, this is the cable that will actually plug into the motherboard. Let's get this also plugged into our SSD. Let's see, okay, have to go this way. All right, and let's push this through. Okay. Feed the rest of the way through and press it down. Perfect. Okay. All right, now I think we are ready to put the graphics card in. Nope, actually, forgot the HD audio connector. So these have, uh, um, let's see, what's that? One, two, five, eight, and nine. So it's a nine pin connector, and one of them is blocked off. It's got a, a blank spot there, and that's gonna line up exactly with the HD audio plug over here on the motherboard. Let's get that plugged in, make sure I got it right. Oh, so pretty much HD audio facing the top of the case. And you will be set. All right, HD audio is in. And put that there. There's already cat hair in my case. Okay, so let's get the graphics card in. Uh, this is going to be a little interesting. I've never had to never had to mount a graphics card this way. Uh, we're going to have to actually go in through here and mount it that way because I can't get it safely around the the tubes here. So let's be very graceful here. All right, and make sure this is almost like a RAM module. Um, make sure that this little um, notch here, or sorry, the clip, is pressed down towards the motherboard. 
and then just uh, make sure you're lined up in the back. Make sure you're lined up on your motherboard here and your PCIe slot and just press in until you hear a nice click and the notch over here will not actually click into place locking you in. So it looks like our um, AIO hoses will keep our GPU from sagging so that's a good thing. Uh, so let's put a couple of um, screws in here so it stays secure. Okay, that's one. And that's two. All right. So now let's uh, actually didn't need didn't need all this here cable. So let's pull the majority of this back through. Make sure we don't snag on anything on our way back. So same uh, thing with the graphics card cables. They have this uh, this here tooth that grips onto a little notch that's here towards the cooling fins of the cooler. Make it do a little U-turn. Plug it on in. Let's go the same route. Let's pull this back. Okay. these together so they look nice. Okay. All right. Now comes the ultimate job of cable management. You will see an absolute mess when I turn this thing around. <laughs> so, pretty much goal here, shove it all in as far as you can and make sure you close the case nice and tight and tell nobody to ever open it. I'm kidding, of course, you don't want that. You want it to try and be as tidy as possible, but given our space limitations here, we will not be able to achieve that, at least not, uh, not as good as one would want. All right, so here's what I managed to do with my cable management. It doesn't look too bad, not, at least in my opinion. Um, so let's try and get this thing to close. That's the ultimate test of any cable management job, is if your side panel closes. Make sure it lines up everywhere. Looks like it did it. Not having to press on it, I was just didn't uh, didn't press on it at all. All right, let's flip it around. You can see everything up front. Okay. Now's the time to do one final check. Make sure you connected everything. I've got CPU power. I've got uh, motherboard power. Okay, let's give it some light in there. There we go. It looks a lot better. Um, I have my front panel Ding. connectors. I have my, all my fans are hooked up to my fan hub in the back. I've got my RGB fans hooked up down below. I wired the reset switch to the RGB controller back there that came with the case. GPU is powered. I've got the CPU fan connector for the pump. This is the fan um, hub that I have back there connecting one, uh, two, and three fans. Got the HD audio. All right, I think we are ready to do a test boot. One thing to note is that you will need a wired uh, keyboard and mouse on your first boot, just because um, when you have a wireless keyboard and mouse, it actually goes out to the internet and grabs drivers for it. So uh, without further ado, let's, let's do this.
Yay. It actually looks pretty. Thank you. I hear water trickling. That's a good thing. Main thing to note <laughs> is uh, we get a video signal. Oh, oh, there it is. Looks like it. We did it, ladies and gentlemen. We built a computer. It took a long time. May have spoke too soon. <laughs> I think it's booting this time. With AMD, it does a few boot loops. Reboot and select proper boot device or insert boot media and press a key. All right, so this is pretty much telling me I got to, um, I have to install a boot media. Uh, so we're gonna reboot and then just make sure that we get to the BIOS and see all of our stuff. So the motherboard actually has its own RGB lights. That's pretty cool. All right, so let's keep hitting that delete key. There we go. We are in. So it sees our uh, 500 gig SATA M.2, or not, sorry, it's not a SATA, it's NVMe M.2 drive here. Um, let's see, we've got BIOS version E7B89AMS.AA0, uh, 16 gigs of RAM right here. Let's see, let's make sure we see our, uh, make sure we see our hard drives. Oh yeah, there's the hard drive. This is our uh, Samsung SSD, 1,000.2 gigs. All right, I think we can call it a day on this one. If you stuck around this long, guys, I really do appreciate it. Uh, one more shout out to our two patrons, my mom and my Aunt Rosa. Thank you guys so much. You made this video possible. Um, I had a lot of fun doing this. It took a long time my lovely assistant there holding the camera. She is pretty much about to fall asleep right now. I'm surprised she's still holding that camera and hasn't thrown it at me at this point. Um, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, if you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Hit like on that uh, on that like button. Um, I'll post a link for every part in the uh, in the description. If you um, if you want to see more content like this, please get subscribed and click that notification bell so you can get notified for all new videos. Thanks again, guys. I can't thank you enough. Have a good one. You know what, guys? I forgot one last thing, and that's to peel off the plastic of the tempered glass panel. So, Princess, would you please do the honors? <laughs> oh. oh, my God. <laughs> there we go. This is a workout. Oh my god, they put the, the paper sticker on the outside of the glass. Look at that. She's a beauty. <laughs> Thanks again, guys.